On Shuttle Flight 6, Challenger's cargo, the tracking and data relay satellite TEDRS, and its solid propellant inertial upper stage rocket, the IUS, weighed almost 19 tonnes. TDRS was the largest, most advanced satellite launch to this time. It was launched from the payload bay After the shuttle moved a safe distance away, the first stage of the IUS rocket fires to boost the satellite from 150 miles to 22,300 miles in altitude. Then the first stage separated. Shortly after, the second stage of the IUS rocket fired to circularize the satellite's orbit. Solar panels and antennae were deployed to provide power and tracking and data relay capabilities. Having attained a circularized altitude of 22,300 miles and traveling at the same speed as the Earth's rotation, the satellite would remain fixed in place over the same fixed point on Earth for its usable life. Later, the first TDRS would be joined by two more identical satellites. The three satellites form a space communications network providing almost continuous coverage to Earth orbiting spacecraft, not the 15% ground stations provide. The network is able to track 26 Earth orbiting spacecraft simultaneously and because TEDRS satellites only relay information, they do not process it, 20 times more information can be handled by this network than by ground stations. Launch of TEDRS was on time. The first stage firing went well. However, halfway through the second stage of firing, ground controllers lost communication with the satellite. It was an hour before even intermittent signals were picked up. They indicated TEDRS had not yet separated from the IUS and both were tumbling at a very high rate of speed. Receiving only intermittent signals, the outlook was bleak. Several more hours passed and then something remarkable happened. Experts to this day are still not sure why, but either an automatic timing mechanism was engaged or onboard systems finally acknowledged and obeyed repeated commands, separating the satellite from its upper stage rocket. Now on its own, the satellite stopped tumbling. Ground controllers commanded deployment of the solar array and antennas but they quickly learned the satellite was drastically off course and drifting further by the hour. Their only hope of getting it back on course was to use the tiny hydrazine thrusters originally designed for minor altitude and velocity adjustments, not for boosting the two and a half ton satellite over 8,500 miles further into space. But at least the satellite was not lost, and NASA officials immediately put rescue plans into effect.